Hello all. I just wanted to make a quick video for you to help with some topics in homework two that I won't be able to get to in class. Um, the first thing that I wanted to cover for you is how to solve a system of equations using graphing. Um, so the only way that um, your homework is going to have you solve systems of equations is using graphing. You can also solve systems of equations using a process called elimination or substitution. Um, but we're only going to be working with graphing in your homework. Um, recall that a system of equations, um, let's see, down here, this is a system of equations right here. If I can, there we go. Right here, this is a system of equations. You have two equations and two variables, and they must be in the same variable. So this x is this x, this y is this y. A solution to this is going to be an ordered pair x, y, that makes both um, parts of the um, system true at the same time. So that's what a system of equations looks like. Um, and the way that we solve a system of equations by graphing is we have to find all ordered pairs x, y that are common to both lines in our system. So our process here, the first thing that I want you to do is I want you to graph both equations, here there'll be lines, um, on the same set of axes. So graph both lines on one graph. Um, once you have both lines graphed on a single grid, what I want you to do is identify all points that are common to both lines. So um, if two lines intersect, the points that are common to both lines will be the single point of intersection. Um, there's a few different um, scenarios and we'll get to those in a minute, um, but I want you to identify any points that are common to both of the lines that you graphed. And then once you've identified those lines, you can go ahead and write your solution. Okay, so let's talk about the different scenarios that can happen and what your solutions might look like and what the options for solutions are. So it is possible to have a single solution to a system of equations. That's going to look like two lines that intersect. So let me just draw a couple of lines here. Let's say that was the first line that you graph and your second line looks like this. If these are what the two lines in your system look like, then the points that are common to both lines is the single point of intersection. Because they only share one point, you've got one solution and that ordered pair x, y, that is the solution to this equation or sorry, to the system of equations. Um, another option is that you might have infinitely many solutions. Um, what this situation would look like is first you'll graph the line, the first line. So say that is the first line that you graph. And then when you go to graph the second line on the same set of axes, you will realize the second line is right on top of that first one. They are in fact the same line. And that means the points that are that are common to both of these lines are any point on this line. There are infinitely many points on a line, so there are infinitely many solutions to the, that set of, um, that system of equations. Um, I do want to make note here and make it clear that this does not mean that every ordered pair x, y is a solution to this system. For instance, I have an ordered pair over here that is not on both of my lines. That ordered pair out here would not be a solution to my system. So I would not include that in my solution. Um, but there are infinitely many points on this line. Um, Alex won't make you do any more to clarify which points are solutions to um, the system. Just know that there are infinitely many solutions, but that means only the points on our lines um, our solutions, not any ordered pair in existence. Okay, and then finally, you might also have no solutions. 
This would happen if there are no points that are in that are common to both lines. That would happen if our lines are parallel. In this situation, there are no points that are common to both, and that means that you would have no solution to the system. Okay, so that's kind of what this is going to look like. So let's practice this. Um, number one, we have this system of equations right here. 2x minus y equals 1 and x plus y equals 5. Um, first thing that we got to do is graph both of these equations on the same set of axes. Just going to set up my axes here. Okay, so to graph these guys, we got to remember how to graph lines. Um, let's write everything in y equals mx plus b format. That's the way that we like lines. That's the way that we can get all of our information. So to, to get 2x minus y equals 1 by itself, you can do the algebra to get y equals. When you do that, you will get y equals 2x minus 1. Okay. So to graph this line, you're going to start by identifying your y-intercept. Um, so our y-intercept comes from our b value here of negative 1. So our y-intercept is 0, negative 1. So we're going to put that right here. And our slope, the next thing we need to do is use our slope. So um, our slope here is 2. I'm just going to make a note over here. Our slope is 2 which is 2 over 1, and we're going to use this in rise over run format. So we're going to start at our y-intercept. We're going to rise 2, and 2, so we'll rise 2 here, and we're going to run 1 to get this second point here. Um, once we get that second point, you got two points here, and we can just connect them with a nice straight line. And that is the line y equals 2x minus 1. Okay, now let's graph the other equation on the same set of axes. So to try this one, we're going to have to get y equals mx plus b. So the algebra for that, you're going to do y equals negative x plus 5. So this one has a y-intercept of 5. That means our y-intercept is the ordered pair 0, 5. So I'm going to come up here to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There is our y-intercept. And the slope of this one is negative 1. So again, I'm just going to make a note here. m equals negative 1. If you have a negative slope, you need to put the negative with either the rise or the run, but not both. Um, I'm, I like to put the negative with the rise. I think um, it's much easier to deal with a negative rise than a negative run. You'll make fewer mistakes. So I always just put that negative up on top with the rise and let the run be positive one. Um, okay, so our rise is going to be negative one. So we're going to come down one and we're going to run one to the right down one over one, there is our second point. And now that we've got two points, we are going to connect those, pretend that's a nice straight line, and that is the line y equals negative x plus 5. All right, so we've identified, or we've um, graphed both of our lines on the same set of axes. Now we have to identify the points that are common to both. Um, the only point common to both of these is this intersection point right here. Um, and we're going to have to eyeball the coordinates of this from your graph. So this is where trying to make sure that you have graph paper or um, that you make a nice, clean, neat graph is really going to help you identify this point. Um, so the ordered pair, for me, it looks like my x value is 2. And my y value here looks like 3. Now, because I had to eyeball this and my graphs aren't perfect, 
Um, I'm going to check this. I'm going to go ahead and just make sure that this works. Um, and again, this X and Y have to work in both of our equations to work. So I'm just going to plug this into both of them and make sure they both work. So 2 times X minus Y, that should equal 1. 4 minus 3 does in fact equal 1, so this works in the first equation. I also want to check it in the second. X, which is 2, plus Y, which is 3, should equal 5. 2 plus 3 does indeed equal 5. So I know that my solution is the ordered pair 2, 3. That is the solution to this system. All right, let's try the second one. Um, again, we want to solve this system by graphing. So we are going to put both of these lines on the same set of axes. So I'm just going to set up my graph. Okay. All right, so let's graph this first line on this set of axes. Again, to solve and get y equals, you can do the algebra. You're going to get 2x minus 1. Um, we just did this. We're going to have a y-intercept of negative 1. So there's our y-intercept and a slope of 2 or 2 over 1. So we're going to rise 2, run 1, and here's my other point. And we will connect those with a straight line. Pretend that's straight. You can use your imagination here. Okay, that's my first line. Now uh, we are going to graph this second equation on the same set of axes. Again, that means we're going to have to get y equals, so you can do the algebra. And when you do, you are going to get y equals 2x minus 4. All right, so to graph y equals 2x minus 4, um, that means our um, y-intercept is negative 4. So we're going to come down here to 1, 2, 3. Negative 4 is down here for our y-intercept. And our slope is 2. That means 2 over 1. That means we're going to rise 2 and run 1. Here's my second point. And again, I'm going to connect these with a nice straight line. So this is y equals 2x minus 4. Okay, we have graphed both equations on the same set of axes. Now we have to identify the points that are common to both. When I look at both of these lines, hey, these are parallel. They have the same slope, which means they don't intersect, which means we don't have any points that are common to both. That means this set of equations, the system, has no solution. And that is our answer here, no solution. All right, that is systems of equations. Um, I hope this helps with homework two, and I hope you have a great day.